Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be tasting a bunch of Japanese treats I picked up. I ordered them online. Most of them would fall into the category of omeyage. And omeyage are literally translated means souvenir. And I first learned about omeyage when I lived in Japan for a couple of years. And it's a deep rooted tradition and ultimately an obligation. So as an American, my idea of a souvenir is when I go to a place, I think of someone, I bring them back something and I say, hey, I thought of you when I was visiting the Grand Canyon, so I bought you this shirt or I sent you this postcard because I'm thinking of you, wish you were here. That's my idea of a souvenir. But in Japan, omeyage, which is often translated as souvenir, means much more than that. You are obligated as a traveler or a visitor to another place when you go on your trip to bring back gifts or omeyage for your friends, your coworkers, your boss, your family. They are expecting you to bring them something. The sentiment of giving an omeyage is more like, please take this gift. I went on this trip. Thanks so much for holding down the fort. That's the exchange rather than, hey, I had a great trip and I was thinking of you. This is I was thinking of you, but more of thank you for holding down the ship and please take this as a gift from my travels. The omiyage themselves do not have to be expensive. In fact, if you spend too much money, that can be a little bit awkward. But what is really important is that the omiyage come from the place that you visited. It is very important that they be locally made from wherever you visited. So that's why when you visit Japan, you'll often see at train stations, the airport, even specific shops and tourist areas that specialize in omeyage, gift boxes that contain lots of edible treats. They're oftentimes food, something consumable, packaged individually so that you can bring a box and offer it to your coworkers and everyone gets a little bit of your trip to Tokyo or wherever you have gone. So they get a little bit of treat. It's almost always food. And so that's why you often see little food stuffs packaged very, very prettily and presented prettily as well. The box that the omiyage come in are often wrapped, sometimes pre-wrapped. And the presentation of that is almost as important as the gift itself. So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of an omeyage taste test. I love it so much because they are regionally specific. They come from places and now you know why. And some of them are just so beautiful or so interesting and all of them are new to me. I have not tasted any of them. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. It's free and you can always change your mind. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to try is this. Speaking of beautiful packaging, look at this. Very illustrative. We know exactly what this is about. Corn, grilled corn. <laughs> beautiful packaging. And that's located way up north in Japan. I paid $8.10 for this. Oh, look at this. So cute. So as I mentioned earlier, packaging and presentation are really, really important in Japanese culture. And this is a great example. Look how lovely. So we have individual packages of corn snacks and it comes with a little information. Oops, good grief. And it comes with a little business card that is in the shape of grilled corn. I love that so much. A little information about the company, which I cannot read. And here is the individual package itself. How sweet is that? I love the yellow and blue. Beautiful. Let's get a little dish so I can dump these out for you. And these are Yoshimi. Oh, oh they smell great. They smell like popcorn. Mm. Oh, look at that. Little pieces of whole corn kernels there along with these puffed crackers that almost look like popcorn themselves. Don't they look like popcorn? Alrighty, <laughs> let's give our Sapporo corn snacks a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm, oh my. Mmm, -hmm. those are good. I think I was thinking popcorn because of the shape and senbei. And I think that's a really great way to describe both the flavor and the texture. The texture is not as crunchy as most senbei I've had. Senbei are rice crackers, but it does have that rice crackery flavor along with a really lovely 
umami sweet and salty coating that if you've ever had senbei before you know what i'm talking about that little magic fairy dust that's on the outside that's what's on this as well but there's a really great corn flavor mm, and great airy almost foamy like crunch delicious now let's try a piece of corn whoops <laughs> let's try a piece of corn oh wow they're really light and airy they're just like the corn that you get in a cup noodle sometimes you open a cup noodle there'll be some dried vegetables on top and sometimes there's corn i used to eat the corn and that's what these are like except these are sweeter very very sweet sweet corn flavor very light airy thin crisp crunch mm, delicious snack does it taste grilled though when i see images like this i have envision grilled so i immediately think kind of barbecued or roasted it doesn't taste grilled though nope so good. I'm going to eat all of them. Oh. Mm, okay. I'm not going to finish these because I have a bunch more to try. <laughs> My kids are going to love those. Okay, next we're going to try, I think, probably the most famous Japanese omiyage I've ever heard of, and that's Tokyo banana. What is Tokyo banana? Hmm? Right here. Tokyo banana. And... These are not as old as I thought. They were created in 1991, and not surprisingly, they come from Tokyo. <laughs> Here is the sweet packaging. Isn't that lovely? And inside, you'll see what Tokyo banana is. Tokyo banana, Tokyo banana. It's a little information card. There they are. Isn't that precious? There's four of them inside, and they're little banana cakes that are shaped like bananas soft sponge cake with a banana cream filling again individually wrapped beautifully presented edible consumable and from tokyo so i got a set of tokyo banana that also include a strawberry cake and this is from ginza which is kind of the posh area of tokyo so we'll try that and then i also got tokyo banana rakko and this one's so cute. Look at that. It's a little otter. And this one has a coffee cream filling. Can't wait to taste that. And then I also got Tokyo Banana Creme Brulee. <laughs> As some of you may know, I am not even a banana fan, but these look so beautiful. It's Tokyo Banana, so let's give them a taste. <laughs> I cannot handle how adorably cute these are. So there's my little Tokyo Banana, and we'll open this up. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Look how cute. Look at that. Look how delicate. It's like a little bean. It has a velvety kind of texture. And it's a cake. It's what a Twinkie always dreamed of being. So it comes with a little tray. And look at that. Oh my gosh. So soft. I'm gonna cut it open and see what it looks like inside. Oh, it's so soft. Do you see that? A little bit of banana cream inside. Alrighty, let's give these a taste. It's Hiraki Mouse. Mm. The cake is very, very soft and spongy. It's like a chiffon cake. Very soft and tender and fluffy. So very fluffy. Not overly sweet which I super appreciate. And the flavor is definitely banana, but it tastes like fresh banana. It doesn't taste like a banana runt, you know what I'm talking about? Or Laffy Taffy banana flavor, that artificial banana flavor. It doesn't taste like that. It tastes like fresh banana. Hmm. My first taste of Tokyo banana and I didn't even go to Tokyo. Wow, that's globalization for you. Okay, next let's try Tokyo banana creme brulee. And these two are beautifully packaged, five of them, little information card. And these look like they're like little boats and they're like creme brulee, which is that beautiful French dessert that has that really nice glassy caramel on top that you crack with a spoon. This is gonna be the banana version of that. So here it is. Oh my gosh, look how perfect it is. And look at the little Tokyo banana creme brulee. So, this is in a little boat. And then on top we've got some caramelized sugar and it looks like 
I'm assuming banana custard or cream. So cute. I love the shape. It looks like a little kidney bean. All right, let's give that a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm, that's what that looks like inside. I have to say, I really like the textures going on in this kind of cookie. It's more like a cookie to me. The cream below is not so wet as a pudding. It's more like a filling of an Oreo cookie, but definitely less sweet. But the caramel on top has a really nice fine crunch to it. The bottom of the boat, the banana boat, is like a shortbread cookie, so it's got a buttery flavor to it. Mmm, and on this bite, I really noticed that there's a caramel layer below the custard, separating the custard from the crust. So when you bite into it, there's a nice little pull and it's a little bit bitter. Wow, second bite I liked much more than the first. This is quite sophisticated, I'd have to say. Alrighty, Tokyo banana creme brulee. Oh, I'm having so much fun. So this one is the one I'm super excited about. Look how cute this is. This is the Tokyo banana rako. When I say rako, I think raccoon, but it's actually an otter, but it's got coffee milk in it. Um, yes. Coffee milk and banana? I don't know, but it's so stinking cute. Look how cute that packaging is. It's got a big bow. Oh, yo. Again, a little information card. <gasps> look! Look at the little friends. They're so cute. Okay, I'm gonna take one out so you can really see it. Oh my gosh, so cute. Look at this little cake. <gasps> I love how the coffee milk is a different shade of brown than the outlining of the otter. So considerate. And this is not on top. This is part of the cake. This is what it looks like on the bottom. Perfect little cake. Alrighty, here we go. It's Itadakimasu. Mmm. 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 Look at that. Inside we've got a slightly tan colored filling. Oh my, I like this a lot. I don't taste any banana whatsoever. Mmm, same soft, fluffy, tender chiffon cake, roll cake as the first Tokyo banana on the outside. But inside, you've got this really luscious, smooth coffee flavored cream inside that's sweetened and delicious. Mm. And I love that it's not too sweet. Just the perfect amount of sweetness for me. Mm. Love it. I think this one so far is my favorite for it's just complete, absolute adorableness, but also flavor and just tender mouthfeel experience. Mm -hmm. So the last of the Tokyo bananas is this one, which is not a banana at all. And this is the strawberry cake from Ginza, which is quite a posh, shoppy area in Tokyo. And let's see what this one's about again. Cute packaging, check. Little note. Oh, and four little adorable straw bellies. These come in little plastic boats. Oh my gosh, look how cute. And like the little otters, the decoration is actually part of the cake. See those little red pink specks? That's in the cake batter itself. Oh, so plush and soft. Okay, let's give this one a taste. Immediately, I smell strawberry. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. That's the interior. And this has that same lovely, plush, soft, squishy, tender cake. And inside, we have strawberry, but there are two different layers. Mm-hmm. I think there's two different layers, or maybe there's one layer and then there's an interior. Super smooth, luscious, not too sweet. And it tastes like a combination of that strawberry pokey, strawberry extract flavor, and fresh strawberry together. But what I love is that it's so smooth, that filling. But still, my favorite one is the coffee milk. I feel like someone's gotten all these sheets for me from their travels, but it's just myself getting stuff for myself, which is fine. Next, let's try this. Isn't this the most adorable packaging you've ever seen? This is a tamago or an egg. This is goma tamago. So goma means sesame seed. 
and this is a little custard in a plastic egg package and it contains sesame seed but i so cute look it looks just like an egg so we'll peel the sticker off but even the sticker looks like a cross section of an egg see the yolk there oh my gosh oh there we have the oh look there's the custard and inside they give you a little spoon what's special about this is that the custard is of course made with egg egg custard but inside is the goma which is the sesame seed paste and that is the yolk and it's going to be black sesame so this is an egg with a black yolk here's a spoon oh. clicks nicely nice and rigid I forgot to mention how much the Tokyo bananas were. The entire set was $47.70. So two of these eggs cost $11.70. Okay, now I'm gonna peel this. Oh, that's lovely. Very nice tight seal. You can see it shaking, oh my goodness. And so you can eat it right out of this. Ooh, it smells great. It smells vanilla. Let's see if we can reveal the yolk. Not yet. Alrighty, let's give it a taste. Itadakimasu. Oh. That's lovely. First thing I taste is vanilla. It doesn't taste like egg. It's not like scrambled egg. Vanilla custard cream is what it tastes like. Super smooth and silky and just oh so tender. Look. All right, let's see if we can get to the black egg yolk. Oh, not yet the yolk oh maybe this one doesn't oh I found it look yeah there it is oh wow huge punch of just sesame great combination though of vanilla and sesame wow okay let me scoop it again so you can see it it's way down there. Oh, there it is. It's a big goma bite. Everything is so luscious and smooth. Mouthfeel is wonderful. Good stuff. And then I get this really sweet Easter egg. It's so cute. Look at that. Next, let's try these. I've never heard of these before, and these are called Cheese Chocolate Burger, or in Japanese, it'd be baga. And these are made by Captain Cheese, and these are from Tokyo. While these look like they might be savory, they are not. It says Cheese Chocolate Burger, so the name might say so, but if you look at that, that looks quite savory, right? Ta -ding! Look, individual little, it's like a gummy burger, you know, like those little gummy burgers, but it looks so much more inviting. All right, here's a sweet little burger. <laughs> Look! How cute is that? So that slab in the middle that looks like cheese is the chocolate. And then we've got the bottom of the patty and the top patty, which has a little glaze on it. It looks a little bit like a vanilla. And if we open it, we've got some mayo, but I think that's more like cream. Alrighty. Let's give our cheese chocolate burger a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. It smells a little cheesy. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna have the chocolate by itself or the cheese. Wow! It definitely tastes like cheese. It tastes like that cheese spread that you got in those little cheese crackers that you spread with a little plastic red plastic stick yes it's salty it doesn't have a strong cheesy flavor it tastes a little bit like processed cheese food american cheese slices craft singles it tastes like that but it's firm like a compound chocolate or chocolate and waxy so it's cheese <laughs> but like candy Mm, the cookie is very nicely made or the bun very short and crumbly buttery it's like a shortbread 
and goes really nicely with the salty, sweet cheese, chocolate cheese. Wow, it's good. Captain Sweets Burger. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovelies, I save the best for last, the one that I'm most excited about, and is this. And these are called Hiyoko Manju, and these have been around for over 100 years. They come from Fukuoka. It's the most famous omiyage from Fukuoka. It's already pre-wrapped for you. Isn't that lovely? Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, it's so cute! <laughs> Look at the chubby chick on there. Oh my gosh! Oh. Nestled inside are our little bird friends. So preciously wrapped in a little bit of wax paper. They look little pyramids, right? So excited. All right. <laughs> look how precious. <laughs> cheaper, cheaper. Isn't that the cutest? <sighs> so, so sweet. This is the most popular omiyage from Fukuoka, and it's not surprising. These have been around for over 100 years, and that's not surprising either. So cute. The process of making these manju is super hush hush. It's a big secret. Not surprising, because, again, because they're just so cute. The design is just fantastic. I'm gonna do something extreme. I'm so sorry, my little friend. I'm gonna cut this little guy in half and see what the center reveals. Oh, looks like a custard of some kind. Alrighty, let's give our little chick a taste. But look at the outside, isn't that amazing? It's a cake. My first taste of Hiyoko Manju. Itadakimasu. Hmm. It's very nice. This is actually sweeter than many of the other treats I had. It has a really nice brown sugar flavor to it. Kind of a caramel flavor. Simple, quite sweet. The interior is a little bit like mashed potatoes. A little bit dry and crumbly, but infused with this brown sugary flavor. The skin of the little chick is kind of a cross between a cookie and a cake. So now that I've denuded my little chick, that's the filling. It's a little bit crumbly. Mm-hmm. Mm, a bit like sweet potato, but not a drier sweet potato, not like yams or something like that. Mm, more like a russet potato, fluffy, crumbly, yet moist, and lightly flavored with brown sugar. Love it. In terms of flavor, it's pretty simple and humble, but the design and the presentation is just so stinking cute. Love it. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Now to eat the rest of my poor baby chick. Baby chick is actually redundant. A chick is a baby.